It's the final word, World Cup Daily, day 33, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh for Westfield London, Westfield Stratford City. More extra, less ordinary at Delhi in a game where nothing happened. Nothing really happened at all, did it, Jeff? 30 seconds? Wouldn't even need 30. Uneventful. Sri Lanka bat first. They find themselves in some strife at 5 for 135 for, without any reasons that we need to go into. And, and then there's 100 from Charitha Lanka who hasn't had the best World Cup but makes 108. Brilliant. Gets out late in the piece. Uh, they set 279. And then Bangladesh come out uh, all guns blazing once. Shanto and Shaki Hassan get together. They put on 161. Fall towards the end to the wily old vet, Angelo Matthews. Um, and, and it's a bit, a bit bum squeezy at the end for Bangladesh, but they get their seven wickets down they make 282. Just a little talking point from the first innings in the manner of Angelo Matthews' dismissal, an unprecedented one in international cricket. Thank you, Jeff. Yes, so uh, Bangladesh get the job done in the 42nd over. Sri Lanka formally eliminated for what it's worth. And yeah, they had 69 runs to get um, nice towards the end. Matthews' number appropriately after he went bang, bang and got the two co-conspirators. I say co-conspirators, it was Shaqib all the way, but Shanto was there in that um, in that dance circle when they were working out what to do. Uh, Jeff, uh, without further ado, <laughs> never done this before, going to do it today. Let's move to the final word. Hall of Fame. The final word, World Cup Hall of Fame, is brought to you by Westfield London and Westfield Stratford City. Mm -hmm. There is no point beating around the bush here. There, there, there is one no. thing we need to talk about. We need to get to it as soon as we possibly can. Um, at Westfield London and Westfield Stratford City, there is an NHS blood giving bank. And a lot of our listeners have been talking about uh, their want to now go and contribute to that nearing Christmas, an important time to make sure that the blood banks are where they need to be through a very busy time for them. And you can do it on your next visit to Westfield, London or Stratford City. NHS Blood Donation Bank in both of the centres. You can load it up beforehand by going to blood.co.uk to make an appointment. Alternatively, um, you can rock up on the day. They give you a pin prick. They work out your blood type and you're, um, you're away. You're in the chair. You're leaning back. And as we spoke about with Cam the other day, you're clenching your bum. Uh, Jeff, um, wow. Goodness me. Um, do you want to go first? Um, we've got so much to get through on this. This mm -hmm. is the most final word thing that could have possibly happened, I think, uh, as Hypercourse pointed out on social media. Uh, there have been 286,000 and more. 280, sorry, 263,806 batters walked to the crease in international cricket in men's, across 146 years. Is this years. men's and women's? Men's and women's. Okay. Men's and women's cricket. And across 146 years, that is the first time that the timed out uh, dismissal has been given. Uh, at bloody hell. <laughs> Quite a lot to um, deal with here, isn't there? Um, and, it, and it had to involve Shakib, didn't it? He was bowling. He was the captain. And he's, he's someone who has embraced more and more pissing people off as time has gone on. Um, <laughs> dabbled in a bit of enthusiasm for the sports betting industry. Um, kicking stumps over. Slagging off his senior teammates before leading his team into a World Cup where they continually don't make enough runs after dropping leading players all of these sorts of things have been going on and and if it if it was mm. going to be anyone it was going to be him to say we're going to pull the trigger on a timed out dismissal with with some reason i thought i mean people I, it, it, it's so far so far I, the conversation hasn't been quite as insane as it is with runouts at the non-strikers end um, where everybody <laughs> just 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 gets just loses their shit completely and, and if and long time listeners to this show would probably correctly guess that we would be broadly in favour of a timed out dismissal, purely, but partly because it's funny, um, but beyond just sort of pointing and laughing, partly because it's eccentric and, and unusual and we like things that are um, that, that, that don't have precedent or that don't happen very often because they're interesting. Um, and it was interesting in this case. And I've, so I've seen a bunch of people getting annoyed about it, saying it was unfair because the strap on Angelo Matthews' helmet broke when he came out to the middle and so he had to get it replaced. Um, he'd, he also had the entire match up until that point to check whether his kit was working, by the way, um, and didn't actually have to walk out onto the field with broken kit. But even if not for that, he'd already been out there for over two minutes before the helmet strap broke. You've got two minutes. Normally it's three minutes under the laws, um, but in ICC tournaments it's two minutes. And he'd wandered out and he was taking his sweet time um, and he was sort of, you know, had come out to the middle but wasn't actually ready to face up and then went to put the helmet on. Right. And, and I think the, the key part here is that he didn't speak to Shakib or the umpire about his kit. He didn't say, oh, I've got a problem here. Can I swap this out? He just wandered off and waved to the bench and got someone to run on. And then he was really dawdling with that as well. He was looking at one helmet and looking at the other. And, and Shakib's waiting to bowl. He's mid over. So he's standing at the top of his mark, getting more and more annoyed, like a guy waiting for a bus, you know, that, that was, it was supposed to come at 2.34 and it's 2.41 and you're like, 
fuck's sake, you know, I need to get to Westfield to donate blood or whatever it is you're doing. And he was getting more and more irritated. And, and, and I think, I haven't sat there and run the stopwatch over it myself, but I think about four and a half minutes went by before Shakib turned to umpire Erasmus and said, you know what, how is it? How is that? And, and Erasmus ignored him and wandered off. And Shakib followed him and said, no, I'm, I'm serious. How is, like, how is that? That's an appeal for a dismissal. Um, and eventually, after some arguing, Erasmus um, went and told Angelo Matthews what was going on. And then they had another three minutes of arguing with Angelo Matthews, who was, who was remonstrating with everybody. It went on for a very long time. Um, but ultimately, there was, it, it seemed to me there was some reason for it. I reckon there's some framing and then there's some specifics and the two don't um, don't necessarily align. So, A, yes, supportive of this law because you need to have it. You can't let players um, walk out whenever they see fit. It's a bit like running out the non-striker. You may not like it, but the law is necessary. Otherwise, there'd be no way to manage this part of the game, hmm. backing up in that case and, and, and belatedly uh, facing up in, in this. So no concerns with the dismissal in, in that sense. And look, we thought this was going to be the World Cup of Man Cats. We said it many times that given the proliferation of them in domestic T20 cricket, given the better understanding of the running out the non-striker law, um, given the way that uh, the conversation has advanced, that mm. we would see it and we would, we would be enthusiastic about it if it were to happen. Instead of that, it's been another rarity and oddity, if you like. Now, um, the wider lens bit, we should actually go to the law, I think, which is mm. currently law 40.1.1. After the fall of a wicket or the retirement of a batter, the incoming batter must, unless time has been called, be ready to receive the first ball or for the other batter to be ready to receive the next ball within three minutes of the dismissal or retirement. Now, it's two minutes in the ICC playing conditions. And the really important part that we heard from Adrian Holdstock, the fourth umpire, he went through the process. He was interviewed by Ian Bishop on telly. First things first, the third umpire is monitoring it from the moment the dismissal takes place. They've got a, they've got a watch running, as we now know. Didn't know that before, but that makes a lot of sense. And according to Adrian Holstock, the fourth umpire, the two-minute threshold had been breached before Matthews had a problem with the strap on his helmet. I think that's a, a low-key important point mm. here. Technically speaking, had Shakib appealed before the helmet hullabaloo, it would have been technically out yep. by virtue of the fact that the clock would have already passed two minutes. So I think that's crucial here in that um, he was already taking a sweet time to be ready to be at the crease and facing that next ball. Uh, the other is that, uh, as Andy Zaltzman pointed out on social media today, the game occasionally doesn't care too much about time wasting. We saw that through the ashes this year, the farcical way in which, uh, the over rates were uh, managed by the umpires in the middle. Um, the nine overs an hour bowled in that final session at Leeds on the third afternoon, for example. And other times we care an awful lot about it. And that does seem like an inconsistency. Mm. Um, and also inconsistencies from country to country about helmets. So um, I know there was an observation made by a couple of people that Matthews could have conceivably faced the first ball uh, without a helmet and then called for a helmet, then there would have been a delay and no concern as there would have been no law to have dealt with that. But what if he was an English player? English players are um, required to wear helmets to meet their uh, their national bodies playing conditions. Mm. Now. You're not allowed to bat with a hat um, if you're an England player. Even if it's even if you're facing spin. Cricket. So the argument was that given Matthews was facing, was facing Shakib, he, he would have been able to face up without a helmet. If you wanted to, some players do, some players don't. Um, totally respect the right of a player to wear a helmet. I saw some people being very precious about this, like, oh, this is a, this is a huge health risk. How can you demand that he face bowling without a helmet? Nobody's demanding any such thing. He had an option to face or not to face, and he chose not to face, and, and there were consequences for that. But I, I think a key point here, though, is the strap on his helmet was broken. The helmet's still worked you could put the helmet on you could face a ball with a broken strap yeah. the strap is is really to stop the helmet falling off when you're running between the wickets or when you've jerked your head around if you're playing a pull shot or something like that it would it wouldn't be a health risk to face one delivery with the strap not working and then to get it fixed up after that I'm a little bit sympathetic to him on that one because if you're not conditioned to batting without the strap underneath your chin um, that that could be an added complication sure. facing even one delivery but I mean I reckon that where we're um, where we're both probably going to land on this is that it would have been it would have been prudent had the umpires had some discretion here. But the thing was, uh, and they kind of do right. I mean, mm. at the end of the day, the umpires are there to adjudicate the laws of the game, but the captains manage the game. That, that's that's crucial to uh, 
the running, the managing of the laws by the umpires. It's the captain's game ultimately. And Shakib being Bangladesh's captain, you've already touched on this, Jeff. He's a shit stirrer. The way he was uh, smiling, uh, uh, very subtly smiling, and then refusing to engage with Matthews after their first altercation, turning his back on yep. it and just kind of subtly standing there with his arms crossed. Um, Shakib is now a villain, but he was a villain before due to his. Um, what his suspension a couple of years ago, and I suppose it's binary with these things, Jeff. If you're if it's heroes and villains, and you're already a villain, he may not give a shit mm. if a few more people don't like him. He would have been thinking purely about Bangladesh's progress in this tournament, the uh, Champions Trophy spot. That he was the man who alerted people to that, yep. knowing they need to finish in the top seven, and knowing that Sri Lanka and them are around about the same spot uh, in the table at the moment. Mm. So, um, yeah, but- I, I, I can totally I can totally appreciate the view that. Um, Matthews was within his right to have some discretion shown there. We saw that um, with umpires in Cape Town in 2007. Sarab Ganguly could have been timed out times over. He didn't know he had to bat because Sachin, uh, the third umpire, by the way, the third umpire that day was Maria Erasmus, oh. hadn't, ne- hadn't communicated adequately to the dressing room that Sachin wasn't allowed to bat at number four might have been five, one or the other, because of the um, time he'd spent off the field. Mm -hmm. BVS Lakshman was still in the shower. Two quick wickets fall, and Ganguly hasn't got his pads ready. Took him six minutes to get out there. And the umpires spoke with uh, the captain, Graham Smith, and they agreed not to appeal. So um, this isn't without precedent entirely for a a fielding captain to withdraw the the appeal at that stage. But 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 Shakib was never having a bar of it. And that's not the umpires having latitude. That's the umpires consulting with the captain, which they did with Shakib as well, and and asked him twice if he wanted to withdraw it, which I don't think is appropriate, actually. I don't think that should be in the remit of umpires to imply to a captain that he should withdraw the appeal, Um, because that is what they're doing. Essentially, they're saying, oh, we would like to avoid this becoming an unpleasant incident, so please withdraw it, is, is is what's implicit in would you like to reconsider, um, as in this is going to cause a problem. And we see umpires do it with man-cad run-outs all the time as well, that uh, that they ask captains if they want to uphold it. And I don't, I don't think they should be doing that, honestly. Um, that, I've got a, maybe yeah. a different view on that from some other people. But something like the, the Ganguly situation, that's a, you know, there's a mistake involved. There's been a miscommunication. Um, there's communication with the team on the field. Matthews didn't communicate with anyone on the field. He just went ahead and did his own thing. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, you and I know from, from <laughs> being in Sri Lanka a couple of years ago, he doesn't mind a bit of time wasting at certain times of the day, um, mm. Angelo. So, <laughs> I, I, so I don't think... I don't, I don't think that this was Shakib going, this guy is Jeff so Lemon. <laughs> Can Jeff Lemon please sit down in the commentary box? Google it if you want to know what I'm talking yeah, about. I've, got, I've actually got the offending shirt right here. Um, it's just come back from the laundry. Beautiful. So, <laughs> look, it, it, this, is, this, is, this is where I'm coming to with this. I don't think that Shakib looks at this and, and says, oh, this guy's super dangerous. We need to get rid of him any way we can by hook or by crook. Shakib's not sitting there with a stopwatch on waiting for it to get to 201 and then going, aha, how's that? Shakib is standing there waiting to bowl for four or five minutes and then getting fed up with it. He, he's, he cracks the shits. Mm. Um, and if he wasn't the bowler, if the captain wasn't also the bowler, this might not have happened because the bowler would have been standing there getting annoyed, but maybe it would have gone through somebody else and, and they wouldn't have been as irritated. But I think this is just Shakib saying, you are taking the piss. I've had enough of it. I've been waiting for you for five minutes this isn't okay, I'm appealing because because you are not respecting the other team out here. I think that's what it's about rather than it will be portrayed as Bangladesh was so desperate to get a win, blah, blah, blah. They already mm. had the other guys four down at that point. Um, runs weren't coming freely. They were bowling pretty well. I, I don't think it was a desperation point. It's not like it was last wicket to fall, you know, nine down with two to win kind of thing. It, I think it was more to do with what was happening on the field at the time. And also, these teams hate each other, right? The they hate rivalry, each other. The, the rivalry that Andrew Fidel Fernando, our mate from Crick oh. Info, he wrote a wonderful piece about this uh, before the Asia Cup, um, that there's this the snake rivalry and all the rest. So um, there is that a- extra um, needle between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Just, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm mindful that, like, the the intent of the law is to prevent players from taking the piss. And I, I, I get your point, right? You think that uh, Matthews was taking the piss inherently by taking as long as yep. he was to get to get ready. But I, I suppose, you know, the Adrian Holstock intervention, I think between innings is a really important one because he'd been more than two minutes already. But if he hadn't have been, had it been 90 seconds, I might mm-hmm. have a slightly different view because yeah, the intent of I. the law, yeah, the intent yeah. of the law is not to uh, preclude a batter from getting the necessary equipment. Although uh, checking his equipment before playing an in international innings should be um, the responsibility of the incoming batter 
yeah, not the responsible. It should have already the been done. The fielding team and the umpire should have already been checked. But let's say, you know, I, I, I mean, it looks like he pulled the strap and it broke off. Maybe it broke off due to the the, 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 the strength in which he um, pulled it at the time. But mm-hmm. um, the intent is not to be getting players dismissed for that. It's to stop them from time-wasting. And I don't think this met that standard. Yeah. Um, and I know with dismissals, there's all sorts of unintended consequences. And we've spoken about that before. You know, the, the running out of the non-striker, the intent of that is to prevent non-strikers taking the piss. And yet, of course, we, we take a more prescriptive view on that in the past. Mm. So I know that's not cut and dry either, but it's just worth mentioning on the way through that, um, that Matthews wasn't, uh, I don't think, uh, doing this in order to gain unfair advantage. I think this was just sloppy, really. It wasn't wasn't intentional in that way, but it was it was ignorant in a way. He wasn't even thinking about. He wasn't concerned. He wasn't remotely concerned about the other team involved or how long he was holding everybody up. He was happy to take his time to do it. And so I think there's an mm. aspect of respecting the fielding team. the The field is the domain of the fielding team, right? When when you're when you're bowling, it's your field. The batters are, are guests in in that environment, and then it reverts. You know, it's like the home changing room. The field belongs to the bowling side. The ball belongs to the bowling side. Um, things like that etiquette of not of the batter not touching the ball. You know, Vera yep. Coley was doing that all through his innings against South Africa, <laughs> picking the ball up and handing it back. And you could quite rightly have an appeal against you for that because it can change the condition of the ball if you've got a fielding team trying to manage the ball in a certain way and then a batter is picking it up with a sweaty glove. There are potentially affecting the condition of the ball it's not theirs it's not your ball it's not your Mm. pitch it's not your field it's not your timing structure you were supposed to be out there ready to face a ball in two minutes and he wasn't and he's given out and he was pissed off about it but i don't actually think he's got that much cause to be pissed off one other thing to note before we complete the final at hall of fame today is that we we were talking about timed out dismissals on our history program uh, called story time about two or three months ago i recall jeff sitting in my mm-hmm. backyard in london i don't know when in the summer it was exactly but um harold haygate uh, in 1919 some 61 years before uh, the law actually was entered into the mcc book in 1980 um, he was given out absent hurt in a first class game at taunton mm-hmm. which was eventually tied because he couldn't walk out to bat because he still he had a suit on and he just returned from war and he, he was banged on the team sheet and all the rest of it. But yep. um, that was effectively the first instance of where a player was told, look, you haven't got your pads on in time, you're out. Well, they, they introduced the timed out dismissal as a response to that because they didn't have a way to deal with that situation, which was he was injured, played the first day of the game and then didn't play the subsequent days and they wanted him to come out and bat at nine to, mm. to try to salvage a game um, and he was trying to get ready and get out of his civvies and it, it all took so long that eventually the fielding captain appealed to the umpire and said, we can't stand around here all day waiting for this guy to get ready. So they, they agreed, the umpires, that he wouldn't be allowed to bat but it wasn't a dismissal, it was, it was an absence. So there was wasn't any absent. innings recorded. Um, he was absent hurt. But that's why the timed out um, law got written the way that it has been um, and the way that it was applied today. Uh, the other Hall of Fame bits and bobs I had, for what it's worth, Jeff, as, as low-key as they are in, in the game that we've watched, uh, when six Sri Lankan players crowded around the, the central umpire, Maria Rasmus and Richard Lingworth, um, to talk about the condition of the ball, I thought that was, was noteworthy. Um, uh, and, and also the... Um, uh, the the, uh, the the bit where uh, when, and you've got this written down as well, he said, Jeff, where Chris Silverwood, when Matthews walked off the field, he gave him a pat on the bum. It was like with a, his notebook. Like champ. That, that was that <laughs> yeah, was yeah, the best. Like... <laughs> so Silverwood's got his where he writes his notes down in his little like hard hardback notebook. It slaps him on the ass with that as he goes by. Um, you know, just 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 a little bit of uh, I don't know solace, whatever it is. Um, the bum pat Horse makes play. people feel good. Um, I, I also liked um, Mushfiqur Rahim when he when he was trying to stump Dunajaya to Silver and fumbled the ball knocked one of the bales off, came back and knocked the other bale off and then just to be sure pulled the stump out. But he ended up holding it above his head like he was just about to spear a, a bull rog through the heart in the mines of Moria or something. Like full kind of, uh, you know, Highlander stuff. Like he was just about to stab it through somebody. Um, but he, he managed to get the wicket and nobody got stabbed. Although that did seem a bit more likely later on. There was a West Australian politician called Troy, Bos- Troy Buswell who once got done for sniffing the chair of one of his colleagues, as you do, and he got the chair above his head and started roaring, Whoa! after doing that. So it reminded me of that when you were describing getting the stump above his head. Wow. Uh, Buswell no longer in the parliament. Uh, right, Jeff, that's the end of the Hall of Fame, and thus we'll take our break. We'll take our leave. On the other side of it, we'll talk about the game that was. 
All right, final word daily. Adam Collins, Jeff Lemon for Westfield, London, Westfield, Stratford City. More extra, less ordinary. Jeff, a very quick up sum on the game. It was, we've already gone through in the 30-second summary, but given we yep. flipped this game on its head, there was a moment there. There was a moment with those two wickets that it had to be Matthews picking mm. up Shaqib with his first ball back into the attack, finds the leading edge. Uh, to that point, Shaqib had been brilliant, and you could see he was something of a man on a mission. And then getting Shanto in his next over, wickets falling at 210 and 211, and then three quick wickets towards the end. Matashanka, yeah. one of them, two for Teek Shana. They did get a bit of a window there. Well, they, it was absolutely a window. So Shakib on 82 and Shanto on 90, and they had just looked so untroubled. Um, they'd, they'd taken a bit of time to get things running, and then there's the over where Shakib wax 19 off uh, it was Rajita wasn't it who was bowling that mm. 30th over um, and, and they're going on from there and it all looks like it's going to be a procession and then and Matthews comes back for his second spell it was just a bit too late it was it was almost Bangladesh's batting is so nervy that they did end up seven down um, Teek Shana bowls a brilliant Yorker to hit the stumps of Mamadullah who's been in um, terrific form and got through him um, and, and there was there was that brilliant bit of bowling from Matashanka as well to take Mushfika Rahim's off stump out so Mushfika Shakib and and uh, and Mamadullah those guys have had 14 World Cup campaigns between them um, you know it's, two of them have been at five World Cups and mamadullah has been at this is his fourth so extraordinary experience but but got through those guys and there was there was that possibility they just didn't quite have enough um, because Shakib had managed to take enough of a dint out of it but he should have been out in the 11th over and that was Angelo Matthews yeah. first over comes in drops it short little medium pace flat batted straight to cover and Asalanka drops a catch had he taken that one, I think you know Sri Lanka probably go on and win this game. But um, Matashanka felt for him that like this this guy is a gun, and yeah, we've seen him get smashed a couple of times as well. But third over, that big sort of toe end of the bat to to get Tanzi mm. caught in the ring after smashing a couple of boundaries. Um, then he has a catch dropped off Litton Das at fine leg, and then in the seventh over, perfect Yorker blows his shoe mm. off basically Litton Das and goes top of the wicket takers tally in the World Cup. So he won't get the knockout games to try to swell that tally, but at the moment he's taken more than anybody. Um, so I've just been super impressed with, with Matashanka every time, every game that I've seen him bowl. Yeah, 21 at 21. A word for Asalanka as well, uh, a century yep. in a uh, match losing effort. But they were only 135 at that point when that Matthews um, uh, timed out dismissal mm. played out. And you could easily see a world where they're all at 180 odd. But Asalanka yeah. was out there to the middle for all of that drama and he composed himself. He went beyond 50. He had a much quicker second 50 than his first, his second 100 in one day cricket. He's done some really impressive things through the course of this tournament. And um, look, it's, it's, uh, it's cold comfort right now given. It's in a losing effort, and they, I think, fall out of the top seven. Uh, so they might be in that best spot as far as the Champions Trophy uh, is concerned. But um, to bat through the way that he did was was super impressive, and a lot of that uh, was in tandem with one of our favourites, Dan and Joe De Silva. Yeah, that was an important partnership um, that those two put on. Because I, I think, so they put on 78, and I think after something like the timed out, you could imagine players trying to take down the opposition, you know, trying to yeah. trying to get slog happy and, and get revenge or whatever. He didn't do that, just kept calm. Put on another 45 with Tikshana later um, in the innings and then 20 more with Chimera before Asalanka's out in the 40, 48th, was it? A couple of overs before the mm. end. Um, three wickets with a short ball from three of the, the different Bangladeshi quicks all firing them in and, and um, Litton Das takes all three catches down at fine leg or deep third depending on the, the right hander, left hander um, and yeah the stumping that we mentioned as well and Mushfika Rahim's absolute screamer off the top of the innings as well oh, where, yeah. um, the, the big edge, so Kusal Janath Pereira comes back in the team for big Frankie Runes, um, Dimith Karuna Ratna who's left out after a couple of failures and it's taken well in front of first slip like Mushfika took off, I, I doubt he's taken a wide to catch than that in his life. So in terms of what's to come, Australia play Afghanistan tomorrow. Jeff, you're at that one at the work, rest and play in Mumbai. Uh, Sri Lanka play New Zealand in their last game. They can they can spoil the party for the Black Caps. If they win there, they can open the door to Pakistan and Bangladesh have their last game also against Australia, which will be on the penultimate day of the group stage. Our show is brought to you by Westwood London, Westwood Stratford City. More extra, less ordinary if you like what Jeff and I do. Patreon.com forward slash the final word. Join our wonderful community. And that's it from us. I hope you've enjoyed our conversation about Andrew Angelo Matthews and Shakib Hallasan, something we will never forget. And may never see again. <laughs>